In this video, I wanna talk about one of my absolute favorite topwater baits, which is the plopper. The Whopper Plopper, the River to Sea Whopper Plopper was the original bait. It is still a fantastic fish catching bait. Since then, other companies have kind of come out with their own version. In this hand, I have the Berkeley Chopo, also a really good plopper style bait. There's a number of these out there on the market now, but in this video, I wanna talk about three different tips on fishing a plopper and how you can start to get more bites on the plopper. When it came out, you know, back in the day, it bursts on the scene. You could just throw this thing down the bank and catch a ton of fish. It's changed a lot since then. So we're gonna talk about a few tips in this video, things that will help you to catch more fish on it. Now, before we get into the video, this one is brought to you by my fishing apparel company, Fin Fishing. Right now, if you buy any USA made sun shirt, you will actually get a free tri-blend t-shirt. I keep telling everyone that this is the most comfortable t-shirt that you will ever wear. And I 100% stand by that, whether you're outside picking weeds, watching football, or even fishing, or just chilling. It's a great t-shirt. It's a $20 value. And right now it's absolutely free with the purchase of a sun shirt. So all you got to do, add the sun shirt that you like to cart, add the t-shirt that you like to cart. It will automatically discount at checkout. It is the best way to help support this channel. All right, let's talk about the plopper. The plopper is, again, it's one of my favorite baits, and it is definitely not as effective all the time as it was when it first came out. It's just like the Alabama rig. When the Alabama rig first came out, you could throw it anywhere and you could catch big ones and a lot of them. It had a different look. It had a different feel. And the same thing applies with the plopper. When the plopper came out, it was a much different noise presentation that the bass were just not used to. And therefore it caught a lot of fish. Now, since then, things have changed up a little bit. And with that being said, I'm actually going to talk. My first tip is throw the 90 every now and then. Now, the, the Whopper Ploppers, the Chopos, they all have a lot of uh, different sizes in them. And the 90 is this little tiny small one. They actually make one that's smaller, but the 90, in my opinion, has just a really unique sound. It has an actually a lot more dulled down sound. You know, the Whopper Plopper probably got his name because of that plopping noise it's so kind of known for, that blah, 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 blah. But the 90 has a very different noise. And as you can see, this is, a, this is a 110 size or I think a 105 size. This is a 90, so it's a little bit smaller bait. But this thing, I have seen days out there on the water where this will get bit and your typical ploppers will not. And I think it's really because of that more subtle plop that it has. A, a number of years ago, I was fishing down on Douglas Lake and one of the only things that I could catch fish on was an, uh, a, the 90 size plopper and I, I remember talking to guys saying i was catching them on a whopper plopper and they were like amazed by it because they're like dude i can't get bit doing anything i can't believe you're catching them on plopper well the secret was i was throwing a 90. it has that more subtle noise to it and i think it can get a lot of bites when kind of your other your 105s your 110s your 120 size will not get bites so every now and then especially in tough conditions or in really highly pressured situations Throw the 90. I think you'll be surprised at how many big fish you can actually catch on this little bait. Now, the next tip is actually the way that you work this bait. You know, for the most part, when you are catching fish on a plopper, you know, you're casting this thing out, you're reeling it back to the boat. Now, when, like I said, when it first came out, that is all that you had to do, and you could go out there and you could catch an absolute crap ton of fish. Sorry, lack of better words. But Nowadays, I do think that sometimes imparting a little bit of action into that bait will help you to get more bites on it. It just it helps it to stand out among all the other baits um, out there. Now, the, the thing that I do to impart action on a plopper style bait, because it's really designed to just reel, is what I'm going to do is just stop and go retrieve every now and then. When I am reeling this bait in, I will just kill it every now and then. That is one of the biggest things that I like to do. And every now and then what I also do is just 
speed it up just slightly. I'll literally just kind of speed it up from the reel handle and then kind of slow it back down. So all I'm doing is really just varying the retrieve speed of that plopper. I'm speeding it up, I'm slowing it down. Sometimes I'll even kind of just twitch it randomly in my uh, cast as I'm bringing it back. Those little just differences, those little variations in your retrieve, I'm telling you that there are days where that will be the difference in catching fish on a plopper and not. I actually saw this a number of years ago. It was the first time I really experienced it in full down on Lake Norman, down in North Carolina. And it was like clockwork. I could go out, I was actually throwing this exact whopper plopper right here, like this exact bait, because it's, it's bent down because of the ferociousness of the spotted bass on that lake. But I was throwing this bait, and if I went out there and I casted it and I just reeled it, I would get very few bites on it and a lot of times they would miss the bait and i found that if i cast this bait out and i just kind of twitched it and let it sit for a second poosh, those spotted bass would just come unglued on that thing even largemouth as well they would have it t-boned in the side of their mouth it was the complete difference between catching fish on a plopper that day and not catching fish on a plopper that day. So vary the retrieve with your whopper plopper. It's very simple. You just gotta think about it. A lot of times fishing tips are simple. You just have to be intentional about doing them when you're out there fishing. All right, let's talk about tip number three. I think that this might be the most important. It's the most vital to your success. The big thing with whopper plopper style baits, and these are kind of the smaller ones, like this is a, a 105, this is a 110 size, they have 120s is that they weigh a lot. Like there's a lot of um, weight in these baits. And when fish come up, it, once you hook a fish on these baits and they come up and they're shaking their head, they're thrashing their head, it can be easy at times to lose fish on a plopper. It really can, because again, there's a lot of weight, there's a lot of leverage that that bait can get to kind of pop out of that fish's mouth. It's the exact same reason why we lose fish on baits like glide baits. There's just a lot of weight for those fish to thrash around with. Now, with that being said, these are our hard bait with treble hooks. I think one of the biggest reasons that a lot of anglers have lost fish with whopper ploppers in the past is when they first came out, the bass were so aggressive on these baits and you could take a flipping stick with 50 or 60 pound braid and, and you'd land every single fish, but the fish were hitting them different at the time. When they got them, they got them. They were always sideways on their mouth. And sometimes it doesn't matter what rod you are using. If the bass is eating that bait that good, you're gonna land that fish. So nowadays, when, when fish don't seem to hit them quite as hard, now there are, there are still times, there are, there are situations, you know, fronts coming in, the fish are active, where they're absolutely gonna crush these things, but they're not always crushing them. So what I have done is I like to fish these baits because they are hard bait with treble hooks. I like to fish them on more of a composite rod. I think that this is extremely important. And composite rod, one that bends, it has a more kind of slower bend to it. The, the exact rod that I like is actually my chatterbait rod. I use a uh, an Arc Tharp Series B Hitte rod. It's a seven foot four inch rod and it's more of a composite rod. It's half, it's half glass, half graphite. It has more of a moderate bend to it. So it bends throughout the blank. Anytime that I'm fishing treble hooked lures, whether they are Whopper ploppers, crankbaits, rattle traps, lipless crank or jerk baits, uh, glide baits, even. I really like to have a moderate bending rod. I truly believe that it is the difference in hooking up with fish and, and, and losing them and then landing them is just having that moderate bend. So I fish 40, 30 or 40 pound braid on that B Hitte rod, that moderate rod. And I'm telling you, that is a phenomenal setup. You get a good hook in those fish, always use sharp hooks. You get a good hook in that fish and you lose a lot fewer of them with that moderate rod. So guys, those are the three big tips when it comes to whopper plopper fishing. Now, I actually did a full podcast with um, uh, Hunter Shyrock on plopper fishing. It was really, really cool. And I haven't paid a lot of attention to my podcast channel. I'm hoping to turn that around in the next month. But if you guys want to check out that podcast, I'm going to leave it linked right here. Also, don't forget to check out the fin gear right here. I will see you guys tomorrow.